All right. It's seven o'clock and we are live. God bless Lady Smith. I see you're here. I'm going to just switch, um, allow you to also be co-host so that you can let persons in if I don't notice them. Let's do this now, make co-host. Yes. Okay, we are just going to take the time to breathe a word of prayer and just allow God to direct our thoughts uh, towards him right now. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, Savior, friend, our very present help God in time of trouble. Jesus, we look to you. We hope in you, Lord, we call upon your name. Mighty God, to be present with us, God, in our difficult times, in our good times, Lord Jesus, all times, mighty God. We invite your presence in our midst right now to direct us towards your word, towards your will. In this time, Lord God, when we need to know who we are, who you have made us to be, Lord Jesus, to understand ourselves, Lord God, as you reveal us to ourselves. Lord God, we cannot know ourselves except you reveal, Lord God, what you have made. Lord Jesus, we are not like others, God, who choose to uh, rebel against you and to reject your authority over our lives. We accept you, Lord, as our source, Lord Jesus, our only source, mighty God. So we thank you tonight for this study as we continue to look into this teaching and this understanding of who we are, Lord God, through the doctrine of humanity. God, we receive your favor right now. We pronounce your blessing upon every soul who will hear this study and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And tonight, what we will be doing is that we will try to reflect again on basically all that we have looked at and try to uh, make some uh, conclusions um, on this study of you know, the doctrine of humanity. What is God's uh, design? What is God's uh, revelation of who we are as human beings? Where did we come from? Where are we going? What, you know, how are we? How are we made up? Um, what, um, what is our purpose? And so on. And so this, doc, this study seeks to understand or to explain as the Lord of, um, uh, would reveal it through his word, you know, who we are um, as human beings. And so we will take a, take a reflective uh, view um, of all that we have looked at so far and see if we can draw some conclusions and get, um, give ourselves a, a better feel uh, really of who we are, who God has made us to be. Amen. So the study tonight is on some es essential conclusions on the doctrine of humanity, some essential conclusions on the doctrine of, of humanity. Amen. And we will start um, with a very familiar expression, um, quote by the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates, um, which he says essentially to know thyself. And, you know, in his expression, we get the sense of the importance um, and the value of knowing who we are. Um, even as we seek to know who God is and to know others. So it is uh, very, you know, fundamentally uh, important for us to know who we are as, uh, as, as, as a race, as a people, as uh, God's creation, but also to know ourselves individually. And the path to knowing ourselves individually is first of all to know who we are as God has created us and made us to be. And we can think of all the challenges that the world 
you know, is facing right now because of people who have shifted away from who we are, you know, as God has made us and we are, you know, going uh, in, in many different directions um, in trying to find life and to find meaning for life and to find our way through this life. Uh, but it is important to understand um, from a biblical perspective who we are. Um, we as believers differ from Socrates, however, in that we do not see through our own uh, wisdom to understand who we are, um, because in, in as much as it is important to understand who we are, it is more important to understand whose we are. And we know that we, as the apple of God's eye, are, you know, the center of his creation, but he is, in fact, the center of everything. He is the foundation. He is, period. And so our starting point is not within our own intellect, our own experiences, the experiences of others, uh, but our starting point is with God, as we will um, begin to discuss. So... So our objective here is to know from a biblical perspective who we are. And we had started out this study just trying to, you know, in our fashion, not trying to pretend that, you know, you know, the thinking that we have is the only thinking out there. And we want to be inclusive in our efforts. We want to include somebody, those individuals who do not think the way that we do, but we want to be in conversation with every individual um, because this topic is important, so important that um, we want to consider your views and your understanding of who we are and then try to invite all of us to reflect on, what, on, on, on who God says that we are. Um, so there are many complex theories out there, starting with the you know, theories that try to understand what is reality what is existence? What is, does it mean to exist? And then we fall within the realm of what it means to, you know, uh, the realm of existence. And of course, that conversation is beyond the subject, the, the, this, this, the, the scope of, of, of this study. Um, but, you know, the thinkers start from that point and then fit humanity within that, um, you know, asking the question, where did humanity come from? you know, how are we made up? And, you know, we recognize that there are lots of theories out there. Um, all of those um, theories, however, presuppose something. They, before they even begin to, 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 to look into the issue, they presuppose that, you know, we are the center of existence and therefore we need to find out, you know, who we are. You know, we have come to a, a, a self-awareness and we realize that, that we are, you know, um, are able to, to reflect on ourselves and our environment. We've come to find ourselves like that. And so we have started this journey to find out, you know, who we are and to explore our universe. And so we, from a humanistic perspective, um, you know, you know, many of these theories come from a humanistic perspective and presuppose that we are the center of, of existence. But the truth is, of course, as believers, we have reason to believe um, that, um, and we presuppose that we are not the center of existence, but God is the center of existence because um, we've come to, uh, we all have a sense of the existence of God or of a God at least. And we don't set that aside in pursuing who we are. We include that. And if there is a God, then it, it, it stands to reason that this God has the answers that we are seeking. Amen. So there are those who presuppose our humanistic thinking. Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, there are many devices in a man's heart many devices in a man's heart and so we conceive and you know think of many many things and and, and come up with many theories and ideas but uh, the wise man says nevertheless the counsel of the lord that shall stand it is the counsel of the lord that shall stand so all the the, the theories 
um, about you know space and and uh, and of course how you know uh, creation came about and the Big Bang theory and how you humans are you know the Homo sapien species and how we came from uh, some primitive species and we have evolved. All of those ideas are there and there are some truth and so as believers there is no reason to be threatened by science. But we as believers presuppose something that transcends uh, our human existence because we all came into this world. We are, we are not from eternity past. We presuppose that there is somebody who understands all of this and he's the one that we should seek first in order to know. So, so, so the counsel of the Lord that shall stand, what the Lord's understanding of who we are, that is what will stand. Amen. Um, and we presuppose uh, the existence of God because of the word that he has left us. He has allowed his word to be written. And so that he, we understand that he is the one who desires to reveal himself to us. He is the one that desires to have fellowship with us. He created us for that. And so we have his word as it is recorded in the, in the Holy Bible. And the very first verse of the very first book of the Bible says, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. So it, it presupposes God. It's a, it doesn't try to explain God. It, it, you know, the word of God just begins to tell us what he did, what he did or what he has done. And so we don't even question um, that God, of course, is prior to us and before us. We then submit ourselves and surrender ourselves to know who he is and what he is saying uh, to us, Amen. And so, and so we we take that perspective when it comes to understanding who we are as individuals, Amen. And so, um, we we appreciate that there are different perspectives, perspective that uh, give a biological understanding of who we are, describe us as, uh, you know, how we compare to other species and of course our reproductive abilities. And you know, that we have, we have formed societies, we have formed communities, you know, and all the, those different um, aspects and attributes of, of the human race. Our biology describes, um, uh, describes the nature of human beings, you know, in that, in that way. Amen. Um, psychologists have described uh, human beings in terms of psychological theories. Um, and so we have an idea of these psychological theories of how what you know what man is and we have gone through some of those but as i said you know these all have elements of truth and so we we look at them in the you know that as we are able to ex, uh, 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 identify them as we are able to, to 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 study these things but we put the biblical model and use the biblical model to superintend um all of these theories and put everything together we get the best idea of who we are amen and so we started our study by recognizing and acknowledging recognizing and acknowledging that we are created beings we are beings that did not bring ourselves into this world that we are created beings uh the question is you know what what are the implications of the fact that we uh, were created beings we are created beings and when we look sometimes at how anxious we get over you know the affairs of our lives or anxious we get um over the troubles that we find ourselves in um you know we should reflect carefully again to recognize that you know we are not our own authority it's because we are created beings there's somebody that is responsible for us there's somebody that understands all about our sorrows and that's how we you know the, the, the songwriter sing jesus Jesus knows all about our sorrows. He will guide till the day is done. 
They are not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. So, you know, as created beings, we can reflect and recognize and remind ourselves that when we get into these difficulties and these struggles, that we are under authority. There is somebody who has made some decisions about us, um, you know, and about who we are and where we are going. Amen. And so um, uh, Romans 13 verse 7 says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Uh, but it goes on to say, for there is no authority except that which God has established. So God is the, God is the ultimate authority um, of everything. And then having established himself as the ultimate authority, then he has created um, different authorities Amen. And we are able to uh, have individuals who are responsible uh, for us and can provide guidance for us and support for us. And so we shouldn't feel that we are, you know, in this world and trying to swim this, this maze of life all on our own. There is, in fact, an authority. Amen. And that authority, of course, is God himself. And we, record, we cannot acknowledge this because we are created beings. We were made and brought into this world and placed into this world. And if you think sometimes of our tendency um, to ignore the fact that God has given us the ability to ignore this fact, that we in fact are created and are indeed under an authority and will be accountable to that authority, amen, at a point in time. Another uh, thing to recognize because we are created beings is that this being who created us is an intelligent being that is in control. The world is not running amok. It is not, you know, it is not, you know, all is lost. Uh, not as, you know, the, the news would give us that impression. And when we find ourselves um, in the experiences of life, and the tribulations of life, uh, this pestilence of COVID that we're dealing with. Before this, it was something else. It was the crime and the violence that seems to go in, be going nowhere. Um, the fact that there is an intelligent God who is in control should console every living soul to know that there is control and order in this world and everything is not running amok. Uh, when we're dealing with our family issues, when we're raising our families in our relationship with our wives, in our relationship with our husbands, um, you know, when things are going wrong, when in our dealings with our children, um, you know, when we find ourselves almost losing control, what that is really saying is that we are pulling away from the one who is truly in control. And we should remind ourselves sometimes of the things that we have no control over. Um, and, you know, recognizing the things that we don't have control over, we trust the Lord those things. Um, you know, somebody says, you know, Lord, help me uh, to, to know the things. Uh, that I can, you know, I can control over the, the full uh, 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 quote is not coming to me now, uh, but we want God to help us to understand the, the things that we can change and the things that we can't change and the wisdom to know the difference. And we need to recognize that there is one who is in absolute control. And so when things are, are going astray or going, you know, in ways that we don't you know, if we, we, we don't think that it can, it should be going in that direction. And we are trying our endeavor best to bring it back. Um, you know, and it looks like it's going out and then we start to get anxious and then we start to get irritable and then we start to get annoyed at others and we start to um, then become negative, you know, in our, in our efforts. We need to go back again to this knowledge and this revelation of God that there is one who is in control. Romans 13 verse 1 said, um, not Romans 13 verse 1, Matthew 6 verse 30 said, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which, is, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. It's like a, it's like a, a, a reminder, a, 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 an, an admonition of the Lord to say, listen, stop trying to control all these things that you 
don't have ultimate control over, trust me, um, that is really your full responsibility. And even if it, things look like it's going astray or out of control, if you are in trust with me, everything will be all right. Amen. As created beings, there is also meaning to life. There is one who has an uh, all the understanding of what your life means, of what your life should be all about, of what my life means, and what it should be all about. And it, it, it stands to reason that if, there, if, if we are created beings by one who is intelligent, has the authority in control, then there is meaning to life that he himself also controls. And so we should be reminded that it is the purpose of God that will stand. Whatever theories of man that, 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 that there are, it is the purpose of God that will stand. Amen. Um, Isaiah 14, verse 27, for the Lord of hosts has purpose and who shall disannul it? Uh, you know, and his hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back? So there, you know, the, 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 this reminder that the purpose that we, have in our lives and where we are going is really and truly completely in God's hands, right? And all of this by just acknowledging that we as human beings are created beings. Um, many persons would just ignore this question all to complete. You come and you find yourself, you know, in, an, in the land of the living and you find that you are able to think and you find that you have the ability and the power to do. And so, as we said before, you know, we have sought out many devices. All we like sheep, the word of God said, have gone astray. Every one of us, when we come into our realization that we have life from, the, from, from young children, we are just, you know, trying to explore and just explore experience um, all of life and just to do as we please and do as we will. Um, but we need to re remember the fact that we are created beings and we will be accountable to an authority. Um, there is a, a design for life and God is in control of that and there's a purpose to life and God is, is ultimately in control of all of that. So we are created beings. We are made in his image. How are we made? We are not made um, like the other creatures of the world. We are made in a very unique and a very special way, um, even though we have a relationship with other creatures of the world. We are a part of the natural world, but there's clearly a part of our, ourselves that um, are you know, transcend that really far exceed how the animal think and how the bird think. And of course, it is very clear also that as far as living creation is concerned, we are the dominant creation. We, um, we rule and uh, we have dominion. So we are made in the image of, of Christ. What does that really mean? It means that we are made with a material dimension. So we can't underestimate or under speak of the, the fact that we are living in a real world, in a material world. And even as Christians, we can't disconnect from the real world. We can't pretend that our heads are in the clouds so that we don't know what is going on, so that we don't know reality. And you know, some people um, would even dare to go and say that why well, they don't know anything that is factual outside of what the Bible says. If the Bible doesn't say it, then they can't, they can't confirm that it is factual or real. And so we don't, the word of God does not have that concept. The word of God presupposes that there's a real world. And so it allows us to understand God by the things that we are able to see and touch and feel and hear. So we are material beings living in a material world. Amen. And God's purpose involves material things as well. Your house, your car, you know, your, 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 your land, whatever it is um, that you have in your physical possession is a part of your Christian journey. Your physical body, your physical health is a part of your Christian journey. That's who you are as a human being in the image of God. But of course, we are also immaterial. There is a profound spiritual aspect of humanity and the human spirit um, is the true dimension that 
reflect uh, um, as individuals. Amen. And so we want to recognize that we are, uh, to be human means to be both uh, uh, a, a member of the land of the living, whether you're Christian or you're non-Christian, to be human is to be real, uh, to be able to see and touch and feel and hear and smell. And of course, all of these factor into your relationship with God, your experience with God, but to be, and to be human is also to have something that goes beyond our seeing, our hearing, our touch, our feel, our smell, right? And uh, both of these combine to give us the complete reality of who we are, amen. And it is this complete reality that we need to strive to live in. If you are an individual, for example, who is not uh, uh, in our relationship with God, you are not in covenant with God, uh, you know, you are living your life based on what you are able to possess in your hand and, you know, how you're able to experience your life. You are excluding and not living to your full potential, the full potential that God has for you. God has much more, far more for you than this world. I believe it was the Apostle Paul who said if in this life only we have hope we are of all men most miserable if it is in this life that you if it is in your job that you have hope if it is in your career if it is in that house that you're looking to purchase if that is really where your hope is uh, you are going to be found most miserable ultimately um in your life um being made in the image of god you know, also means that you are an extremely complex individual. You are an extremely complex. Life is not, your life is not simple. Um, you know, your life is not, is not cheap. You are a person of worth. Um, you are a person um, that uh, deserves to be acknowledged as somebody of worth. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what failures you have in your life. All human beings must be acknowledged and treated with dignity treated with worth because you are made in the image of God. Praise God. And as believers, even persons who we, you know, see are believed to be our enemies as human beings, it doesn't matter who they are, whether it is our, you know, family members, whether it is co-workers, whether it is people on the bus or wherever we are on the road, we should never lose sight that every human being is created in the image of God, is very complex, as Psalm 139 verse 14 says. It says, um, we are fearfully and uh, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and uh, wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knows right well. So we, you know, all human beings, all peoples are made in the image of God and should be treated with, with respect. Even if we are confronting evil, even if we are admonishing wrong, even if we are applying our punishment, whether it is, you know, having to send people to prison, whether it is to punish a child, uh, whether it is even, you know, if, if in countries where that is allowed, that person that are being put to death, persons even under these circumstances should be regarded as persons of work should not be thrown aside as trash, um, you know, um, because they have done wrong or treated like dirt because, you know, we, we see them as, as evil. All human beings are worthy, are people of worth uh, and worthy of being treated with dignity, even in those times when we are there in, are in conflict. Amen. Um, as people made in the image of God, we are made male and female, and we had said, of course, that in the sight of God, in God's creation, male, creation, male and female are created equal in the sight of God. Amen. Um, both male and female have dominion and are, have been given dominion over the earth to subdue the earth. 
um, both male and female um, reflect the image of God and nobody can know the full um, and just get a full picture of who God is outside of looking at both male and female and so on. So what difference we said, we reminded for that the difference is one of function, one of purpose. How uh, do I, what aspect of God do I respect, uh, reflect? And we are gone into some details in that, but both male and female are made in the image of God. And if women, of course, uh, are able to show a uh, 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 comfort as the, just as how the Holy Ghost is the comforter that you know succors us and 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 empowers us when we are weak and broken, women reflect that uh, that attribute better than males do. Um, males uh, reflect God's uh, ability to stand in front and model um, and to lead and so on. These are not not um, hierarchies of functions, they are different of functions and humanity will not be able to go forward without the, the power that comes from these uh, 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 functions to bring us uh, into a relationship with God and to help us to find life, amen. Um, we are capable and we are culpable. Um, we mentioned that all human beings are capable. You have the ability to do. You can make it. You can uh, do all things through Christ. You can overcome this particular situation that even if it has been there for a long time, it is within your power. And if it has not been given uh, to you to overcome it, it's because God is working out something that is even greater than that. God is bringing about a purpose that is even greater than that. So he may choose uh, to withhold something, but it is not because he has not empowered us to be capable to fulfill his will. Amen. But he had, is the final authority. And so we trust even those situations that seem not to be working out just yet. It will um, work out ultimately and will be worth it after all. Um, so we are capable, we are also culpable, meaning we are accountable. God will bring unto every man to an account uh, for the deeds that he has done in his body. And so being made in the image of God means that we have the capability that sim similar to how God is sovereign um, and God is in, uh, is in dominion, we also have that capability. And God is ultimately accountable. That's why evil will be put down um, at a point in time. And so he is ultimately accountable for, for all the things that are happening in this world. Amen. Um, to be made in the image of God, to be human, is to have the ability to choose. And this choice has brought about sin. To be human is to be is to, to, to be a person that has to deal with sin, right? It affected God's design and we are fundamentally flawed. We became fundamentally flawed in our lives and that had affected how God designed us to function. So we are seeing the manifestation of that all around us, right? Um, and, you know, to be, to be a person who is in sin means to be a person who has chosen away from God. I decided that I want to go and explore something different from what God has said. So if God has said, thou shalt love thy neighbor, and I choose that boy, I just don't want to forgive that person because of what they have done. I am choosing away from God. And then, of course, that is fundamentally all sin is a choosing away from God. And all of us as human beings at some point in time have and continue to choose away from God. Right. Um, and that sin has affected both our material and our immaterial uh, nature. It affected our bodies, so that's why sickness and disease is in the world. Um, um, it has affected our 
our immaterial aspect, our human spirit. So, you know, we, it has affected the way that we think. We are no, not thinking towards God. We are thinking towards self and what we want and how we feel and, you know, do things when in our own time and when we think we are ready. And, you know, sin is the cause of that tendency as opposed to, you know, you know it is God who made me and not me myself. Uh, my first priority is, Lord, what will you have me? to do what will you have me to be and and to 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 surrender to that surrender to that immediately um and then work our life through the mind of god right sin has affected our our us our, our hearts sin has affected our hearts and so our emotions are become broken we are more uh, we are more resentful, we are more angry, we are, you know, and when we are angry and resent, um, the implication there is that we are malicious in our anger, we want to use our anger to cause people hurt and to cause people harm rather than to build them up. We want to use our resentment to get back at that person who did something for us or, you know, to try to put down somebody because we feel that they are a threat to us in some way, shape or form. Our, our emotions are broken because of sin and it is human um, uh, to be to respond in that way that is the nature of our humanity because uh, we have chosen away from God right and interestingly here in reflecting on you know uh, our choosing to sin and our capacity to sin is that it is not just has not affected only our body it has not just affected our our the human spirit our thoughts and our emotions it has also affected our environment the world that we're living in so it was March chapter 24 that's that speaks of the wars and the famines and the pestilences that arise, but also earthquakes in diverse places. So when you are hearing um, men talking about climate change, even the, ch the climate and the earth is affected by the sin that we have because scientists would tell us that these things are anthropogenic anthropogenic uh a word that simply means man made or man caused this is related to the behavior or the our actions our behaviors are also adding to these things so when we're seeing covid and that's going around it is our actions that have uh, you know allowed and introduced these things uh, to happen. So when we're looking to blame China and to say, well, China created this in a lab, the truth of the matter is that that is a part of, you know, collectively um, our, you know, our sin has allowed these things to happen. And so we recognize that as humans, our humanity is intimately connected even with our environment, uh, with each other, and of course, with God. Amen. So, of course, we had repeatedly said um, sin has caused that this kind of a brokenness. Sin um, is what we are dealing with now um, in our lives on a daily basis. Um, but um, the solution to sin, of course, is Jesus Christ. This is what the good news is all about. So this is why this Bible study, of course, they are able to share hope. We are able to say, listen. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is uh, the man that trusteth in him. There is good news in light of COVID. There is good news in light uh, of climate change. There is good news in light of the violence. There is good news in light of your not having a job uh, right now. There is good news in light of your, uh, your sickness in your body. Uh, you know, this is where the focus of our attention should be. 
um, where sin abounds, the Bible says it grace even much more abounds. And it is the grace of God that has brought this salvation. It's the grace of God uh, that has brought this hope. It, our attention needs to be redirected from that man who has hurt us, from that woman who has, uh, uh, you know, we would say destroyed our lives. Uh, you know, our attention needs to be taken away from, uh, you know, this debilitating disease that we have. Our attention needs to be taken away as human beings. The entire world needs to shift its focus from the chaos that is going on all around us every day. We need to daily shift our focus uh, on, and, and give attention to this good news, this good message that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ has come Amen. And he is the solution to the problem of sin. Uh, what is the solution that he has provided? If all has sinned and come short of the glory of God, and if the wages of sin is death, there is one who is able to forgive all of that because he's the one who imposed it in the first place. There's, he's the one who's gave the rule or the law that the wages of sin is death. So if we turn to him, amen, and he forgives us, then we know that we have the solution. And therefore, there is therefore now, as Romans 8 verse 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Um, and I want to focus on that part for every human being on the planet needs to know this good news today. Um, what, despite what you're going through, despite the heartaches, despite the pain, despite the frustration of life, despite the guilt that you are feeling for the failures that you, you, you have, despite the guilt that you're feeling for the things that you've done against others, um, and also because of what others have done against you, all is forgiven. All is forgiven. There is therefore now no condemnation. So if you find or feel yourself losing hope over this issue that you've been dealing with for so long, I'm here to let you know that God does not condemn you. And this condemnation that you are dealing with now is able to be dealt with and overcome through returning to God, through being restored in right relationship with God. Because any form of oppression that you're dealing with, any form of sorrow is a form of condemnation condemnation is the, is the fulfillment of the death that was pronounced on all of us and uh, this condemnation but through Christ there is no now no more condemnation so we now have been given through him the authority to reverse the curse to reverse the loss to reverse the tears to reverse the anguish the frustration that authority is now within us and given to us because all is forgiven the enemy no longer has the power or authority to bring us down in this way and so all our attention now needs to be shifted uh, towards the living God as human beings Amen. In order for us to really be restored to the to the to the humanity that God has designed us to be, the gospel, Jesus Christ is the answer. Um, and uh, John three verse sixteen, the very popular verse for God so loved uh, the word that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe it. And this is this is where humanity needs to to shift our hearts to where we should all, even as believers, we should constantly remind ourselves. We should constantly remind ourselves um, of this fact that it is the it is believing and accepting. To believe means to accept what God says about you. Accept um, who, who God says that you are. God has made you a human being. God has made you to have dominion over the earth. God has said that you have sinned. Um, God has said that your life and the things that you are dealing with now, the anguish, the frustration, uh, the suffering is as a result of sin in yourself and also in, the, in, the, in others. But believe him when he says that all of that is forgiven. All of that is overcome now. All of that 
um, is set at naught now. And it is, in, it is in living in this belief that the, the law and the place, the low place that we have found ourselves as human beings, we can now begin to be healed. We can now begin to be restored. We can now begin to find life. And indeed, we already have life because he gave us full and complete pardon, full and complete perfection, uh, full and complete life already. And we are just seeing it manifested um, as we move forward in our relationship with God. Amen. So the solution to our humanity, the opportunity to be restored um, into the image of God that he had made us to be is through the gospel. Amen. Um, so be, beginning, uh, believing then is turning our hearts, turning our minds, turning our souls, all our strength back to God. Um, there are many of us who will struggle unnecessarily because we, you know, you know, we emotionally, we believe God and there are aspects of us that are of, 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 of our behavior that demonstrates a belief in God, but there are aspects that are still uh, fearful. There are aspects that are still um, anxious. There are aspects of us that are still trying to control the narrative of our life. We want things, we feel that if things don't go this way um then you know it's going to cause us to you know to lose something very great and very significant you know if we don't get the healing for this lupus that we're dealing with uh then something somehow all is lost and we live in that perpetual state of anxiety um you know because the lupus is not healed as yet we live in a perpetual state of anxiety Oh, you know, because the job has not come through as yet. So we are wondering, you know, how, you know, we don't want to be dependent. So we become anxious because we don't want to be dependent on family. We don't want to be dependent on friends. We don't want to be mendicant, begging people. And so we get anxious. No, we don't want to, you know, so, so, so we still have a part of our hearts that are still, uh, you know, trying to control the narratives of our lives when we don't really have ultimate control, as I said. But to believe God is to turn to trust even in that so that you know as as Job says though he slay me yet will I trust him though he slay me though I find myself listen losing my house losing my my head losing my family I you know I'm losing control over everything all all this Thing that I have built, you know, all these things that I have earned and I have acquired in my life, I'm seeing them all slipping away. And you know, I can't control how they are, I can't control my health. And so, you know, you, 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 we find when we find ourselves in that, our tendency is to, you know, shift a part of our, our trust, part of our believing away from God and, you know, believing that this should not be happening to me. I should not be going to jail, God. I'm a child of, I, I'm a child of God. I should not be going to jail. I, I should not be losing this degree. I should not be losing this job, God. You know, I should not. And we, we're trying to control a narrative that is not in our control. Amen. Uh, the gospel allows us to understand that, listen, if you're, you and you need to believe that even when these things are going wrong in your life, as Job, though he, he, he slay me, God is in control of that. Though God allows, is allowing me to be slain, yet will I trust him. So I, so my heart can find rest early in the morning when I get up and I, and I find a place of worship. My heart can find rest in his word that even though I don't, I'm not getting the job you know things will work out i'm here to let somebody know that it is okay it is okay um, if you know who the God who made you is. It is okay to not understand some things. It is okay uh, to be making mistakes. It is okay even if you find yourself with a sin in your life. It is still okay as long as you are trusting in the Lord. It is still okay. God is here is letting everyone know that all is forgiven. And once he makes that door wide open for all of us, there's no excuse for any human being then to begin to be restored into the image of God, to, for your humanity to come back 
uh, for you to be restored into the person that God has made you to be. If God has made you to be the head, um, but you find yourself being done at the tail, it is not in your working harder and getting this additional degree. It is not in the job that you probably need to get. It is in the gospel. It is in your acceptance of God's forgiveness that this is not a curse over your life, that God don't dislike you more than everybody else, uh, that your faith is weak, and your faith cannot be not, it's not bringing you it is really it is really all about not about you anymore it is really all about accepting what god has and will do in your life that is the beginning of your restoring your humanity amen and so after christ this is the humanity in the nature of humanity so i'm dividing it into two groups here so um, the unbelieving, your humanity looks like you are condemned to eternal separation from God. Outside of Christ, you, if you don't believe on Christ, you're condemned to eternal separation from God. Now look at this. So the, the outlook for the, for the unbelievers is really dark here. You know, your corner is dark. There really is no hope um, for your life outside of your believing on Jesus Christ. But the truth is that most um, unbelievers are, are deceived into hoping and feeling that everything will be all right because they, you know, they're hoping in their self capabilities. They're hoping in something, they're hoping in faith. You know, they're hoping in something spiritual, but not Jesus Christ. So they're believing that, yeah, that things will work out, you know, and they don't believe that, but there is no root of their belief. Then that, that belief is not anchored in God. So, so they still have this optimism, but that optimism is not placed in Jesus Christ. And so really and truly, it, that their, their future is dark, their hope is dark. On the other hand, uh, humanity after Christ for believing individuals is that you have already inherited eternal life. You have already, it is already written um, in heaven. Amen. And but ten, but believers tend to, um, you know, should be assured of eternal life to the power of God. But sometimes we struggle with self-doubt and we struggle with trust. Amen. So the reverse is for us that God has secured us, not, not neither not height, nor debt, nor creature, nor any other thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. God is the one that has secured us. Um, all he's saying, listen, I am the one that's doing it. You just need to believe me. Believe me when, even when the storms are raging. Believe me when the things are happening. You know, don't lose your, your intellect. Don't lose your, don't become irrational and unreasonable. Don't begin to think, boy, nothing good now come out of my life, you know. Don't begin to, to, to take on negative thinking. And uh, that's a sign of distrust. Um, you know, boy, you know, me, me just can't stand it anymore. And, you know, th those are signs of distrust. Amen. Don't lose your don't lose your trust. Uh, you know, don't lose your 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 emotion. Don't get so upset at people that you begin to become to to, to become negative and to uh, to judge them and to be uh, uh, unfair towards them. Don't lose yourself. Don't lose yourself. Amen. Um, and you, because you are assured uh, by the word of God of an ultimate life and life more abundantly, right? So the unbelieving, the image of God remains in some measure in all human beings. The, the, image of, the image of God remains in some measure in all human beings, whether they are unbelieving or not. So every human being, the worst person that you can think of, has some measure of the image of God in them. And that is good. So there's no one person that is the absolute evil. That, that, that is a myth. Um, amen. Not even the worst criminal on the world in the world, right? Um, but believing in individuals have the image of God fully restored because God has given you his holiness. God has given you his perfection, but you are also now having and seeing the manifestation of that image 
um, more and more in your life as you go forward in your relationship with your God. So your life is, the image of God is constantly being restored. You're constantly growing and moving into your best self. Um, you're constantly growing into your relationship with God and into who God uh, has made you to be just by just trusting God to, and, and, low, and following wherever he leads. Um, but the unbelieving will not have that opportunity and will, um, you know, will ultimately be lost, right? Will ultimately lose the image of God um, in their lives, right? So all who are in the individuals must be um, loved and respected because they bear the image of God, right? And believing individuals must subject your carnal mind to God. You must subject um, your carnal mind to God, because no, um, that narrative is no longer true or applicable. You are now, you know, you are no, now no longer condemned. The death is no more over you. Don't, don't walk up and down and tell people about generational curse over your life and that boy, my great grandmother and no mother, those things are now broken through Jesus Christ. And so you are now being restored. And it is in, if, if, all of these things happened in your family's life in the past. It stops with you. Amen. God will restore and will remove the curse from your life. Amen. Right? Humanity after Christ. In the unbelieving, sin reigns. In the believing, some sin remains. Right? Um, for the unbelieving, um, they cannot overcome sin by themselves, and they, they will have to come over to being believers in order to deal with that, right? No, this does not mean that, of course, the, the unbelieving individual will not prosper. They will not, you know, um, uh, you know, have very good intellect, have very good control over their emotions, um, have very good moral values and ethical standards, and will be, not be very successful in this life. We are seeing that, and I believe it was Asaph, Asaph who said, you know, God, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, why, why do the wicked prosper? Um, uh, you know, I fainted unless I believed to the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, so, 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 so people who are unbelieving, that does not stop them from prospering in this life because they are taking the principles of, the, of, of God's promise and are applying them into their lives, but they are not acknowledging the God of those principles. So the principles that you and I, even as Christians, may not be using or applying and we are so anchored and so fearful, they just grab it and they are running with it and they are being successful and they are prospering in this life. But of course, they are not acknowledging God and ultimately they will fail. But for us, when the, the remaining sin God has, has left in our lives, because it is they that are going to allow us to know, to prove to ourselves that God is restoring us and that we have been given his holiness, that we have been given his perfection, because we are seeing that when we find ourselves in those troubles and we don't just continue to accept that, I'm in trouble, but God has already overcome this, this, this struggle for me. You know, things are not going right, but God has already, God has already dealt uh, with this struggle for me. Um, you know, uh, you know, when we are, when we see, you know, our lives going astray, uh, you know, but we continue to accept that, you know, though he slay me, I'm going to trust him because he told me that yeah, um, I am in fact going to overcome. When we begin to see God take us through these difficulties and we are still in relationship with him, it, it proves to us that yes, his promises are true and trusting in him is in fact the way forward. Amen. Then that's when we begin to grow. Amen. So sin remains in our life as a tool for uh, our growth. Amen. So, so for, for believers, you know, when we find ourselves in sin, sin should no longer be seen as something that we need to buckle down under the under uh, uh, guilt and shame. And we're trying to, to, you know, when somebody confronts us with our, 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 our sin, 
you know, because we're Christian now, we're not supposed to sin. Well, somebody comes from the source with our sin, we are defensive and we are, you know, trying to avoid it and we're trying to give excuses and reasons to show why, you know, this is in, in that defensiveness is unnecessary and it may even hinder your growth amen right there is no need for insecurity for believers amen because of sin sin now is a tool in your hand not a condemnation for you and so when somebody comes and says, listen you're a liar telling you, know, you shouldn't or you, you you told a lie there you know to pastor or to whatever you know when somebody confronts you you know you don't need to be defensive because even if you have committed that sin you should know that your holiness and your righteousness is from above amen it is imputed by god by god's grace and so therefore you are open to hearing you know where you have gone wrong what injury that you have caused because now your mind is focused on dealing with sin just as god's focus is on confronting and dealing with it even if it is your own sin you are not you don't care you're focusing on confronting sin what tell me again exactly what i did what did you see what did you hear what did i say is that what i did oh my god that is wrong you know just as david that is wrong you know when he went into Bathsheba and prophet con confronted him that is wrong and then when he realized that he was the guilty one he did what he is supposed to do because he's no longer living for himself he's now living unto christ and so even his own sin your own sin and my own sin is no condemnation people will try to condemn you and make you feel guilty and they will try to remind you over and over again boy how you all you could have do that man how you could have do that but you need to stand in the lord amen and you need to confront sin amen and you need to agree with them when sin is there but you also need to agree amen that this thing is overcome and you amen don't need to uh buckle under the insecurity of your fault some of us are you you know the pride that we develop in our lives because we're trying to project an image of looking like we're christians we don't want to go to church uh, because boy you know i you know I, I don't want people to realize this about me and so i'm going to try to hide it until i can deal with it you know i don't want to come and take communion because you know I need to, uh, that, you know sin is not in your life to condemn you amen there is therefore now no condemnation to them and those who are in christ jesus sin is in your life for you to acknowledge it openly and confront it with everybody else who's confronting it, amen, and confronting others as well. So we are we say no to insecurity about sin in our lives as believers, amen. And we don't join the accuser of the brethren, the enemy, to accuse ourselves, um, even when we find ourselves in sin. Praise God. So sin should work toward being okay with being confronted about faults, this is what it means to be truly human. Amen. To be, to be truly human, uh, you know, means to be somebody that is, um, you know, not defensive, um, not insecure um, about, about ourselves and who we are. Amen. And, uh, you know, our, and our persons who are seeking to do better, to grow better, to grow stronger, amen, to stand on the word of God, even when people are condemning us for our faults, we know, amen, that we have been forgiven. That's what the gospel is. We know that they are forgiven. Even they, the same one who are condemning us, we know that they are forgiven too, and we know that we are forgiven. So we don't buckle under their condemnation, but we agree with them in what, in what is, in, 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 in confronting what is wrong as wrong but different from them we know the path of repentance we know the path of a broken spirit and a contrite heart amen we know the path of restitution correcting errors that have been made and this is what it means to be humans uh, uh, after christ amen uh, what it means to be human is to be able to have uh, intelligent conversations about anything and everything because we are no longer condemned. We know, you know, the stigma is broken. The stigma over my mental health issue is broken. Uh, the stigma over my, my disability is broken. Uh, well, yes, my son has gotten married and he's gotten married all outside of wedlock, uh, but that is nothing that condemns me. And if he, you know, trusts God in his life, nothing condemns 
with him, either. We are now able uh, to find security um, in this life. We are now able to move past the shame and the guilt that people would use as a tool to overpower us. Amen. What it means to be human is to be able now uh, to accept the tool of sin in our life as something that grows us and not condemn us. Amen. Praise God. As saints, we should also work towards being okay with confronting others. Um, and when we talk about confronting others, we're not talking about going and accusing others. We're talking about, um, you know, confronting a behavior that is offensive or hurtful or looks different from what is in the word of God. Pointing it out and asking, you know, the individual who is doing that behavior, what is their thought? What is this happening here? And giving them the opportunity to reflect also on this thing. Amen. And not to be, you know, to be uh, condemned or judged before there is even an agreement and the thing that you're pointing out is wrong. You, you're, you, you know, th th those things ought not to be. And we're working towards confronting others in a biblical way without accusations being accusative, without being judgmental, without being unreasonable, without being overly emotional. This is what it means to be human. Amen. After Christ. Amen. Praise God. Um, the, 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 you know, to be human after Christ is to reflect the image of God. Amen. Uh, in body um, and, of course, in human spirit, right? in, in our hearts. Our hearts need to be um, uh, restored, our soul, our mind, our spirit, our will. All of these things are now on a path of being restored. And so we had made the point that, listen, um, as unbelievers, you know, we are made, we are pe uh, beings that are in a body, but we are we are thinking beings, we are emotional beings, we are feeling beings. Those two things come together to empower our will to do things. But in the unbelievers, you know, there is distortion in this, in, 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 uh, in, in our thinking, in our feelings. So even after Christ, as long as you continue to not believe the Lord, you will continue to be distorted in your thinking. If you think that you can uh, 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 ultimately win outside of a relationship with God or being restored in your relationship with your maker, you are thinking. Your thinking is diminished. Amen. You are completely in a fault. If you feel that like you can go through life without uh, a relationship with God, you are messed up. Right? Um, so that happens for unbelievers, but after Christ for believers, amen, we are working towards restoring harmony between our way, the way that we think and, and uh, to be have our emotion restored, getting back in, in touch with our hearts, our emotional self, and both of those things in harmony drives our decisions, our choices, our will, amen. There is something that I have not yet touched, and this is where we're going to go next, that there is another part to our humanity that cannot be left out. Amen. Praise God. And I'm not going to use it by this symbol. So for the unbelieving, there is a disconnect between this aspect of our humanity. We cannot really exist outside of God. The Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. So the unbelieving, of course, have God and they are able to relate to God, but God is on the outside of their humanity. Amen. But with the believing, this is the place that we have. Amen. This is what it means to be in the spirit of God, full of the Holy Ghost and all of our aspects, our thoughts, our feelings, our will, our behavior, all, you know, operating within God. And we will discuss this aspect of our humanity in the next study. But after, um, um, but our humanity after uh, uh, Christ involves us being restored in our relationship with him and our thoughts are thoughts that we think in harmony with him as well. 
So what does it mean to be a new creature, a new human being? It means being a, an individual that has the spirit of God and we'll discuss the, the depths of that dimension of all that allows us to connect with God um, um, in, uh, uh, and to be human by disability. Amen. But we discuss, of course, being a new creature, we have received healing for bodies, and we see that in, in, in the church today and in the, the, the church in Acts. We are renewed in mind, right? Uh, right? We're constantly being renewed in our mind and our ability to reason and to think through and to understand um, the things of God. Um, we are constantly being renewed in our hearts. Um, things that we used to, you know, some emotion that we used to ignore, we are now embracing our, our, our heart and our feelings on certain things and incorporating them. Amen. Uh, what does it mean to be a new creature? It means now that we are empowered, Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power that the Holy Ghost is come. So our will is now able to allow us through the Holy Ghost to do the will of God that we could not do before. You know, we, we, you know, outside of God, we were struggling with adultery and struggling with fornication and struggling with stealing and lying and just struggling with those words that come out of our mouth. But the human being that we have been made to be Amen, is now empowered to the spirit of God. And so when we decide that we're going to go, you know, to, to, to I've decided um, to, 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 to live like a believer, or I've decided to follow Jesus, with that decision comes with power. That is what it means to be capable as a person and as a believer, we have the ability. We have the ability to overcome uh, the issues of life. We have the ability uh, to overcome those toxic relationships. We have the ability to overcome those things that are uh, driving us on our inside. Um, our own compulsions to be hurtful to others. Our own compulsions to control. Our own compulsions uh, to, to be fault finders. Uh, our own compulsions to be uh, criticizers. We have the ability of all of that has been given to us and we can be the new creature that God has made us to be. Amen. And so we as human and beings are made, are given a mind to think. So we are being restored in our ability to understand things, to reason things out, to reflect on ourselves and our own behaviors, and to make changes as we see uh, those changes need to be without, uh, the, again, the pressure of guilt or the feeling of, boy, I know that this is wrong, but boy, I can't change it now because people are going, and people are going. No, we now are not condemned. And so we can be ourselves. We can be feel free to be ourselves. Amen. Good, bad, or indifferent, we can feel free to be ourselves because the Lord, amen, has forgiven us and we are now trusting in him and growing every day. Um, we can reflect on, uh, on our emotions. We, are, we can get mental healing and our mind finally needs training. We are now in the process of training our minds uh, to function in the way God expects our minds. So no longer do we have the excuse of some mistake. You know, some people just have locked themselves to that excuse. That's some mistake. And, you know, we will get better, but you really don't see an, a power and an authority that they have commanded to say, no, I will stop being afraid of this. That is no longer, that, that's, that they're not harnessing that power. They have just come to an acceptance of certain things about them uh, themselves. But no, our mind now needs to be renewed um, to think differently and to train our minds to overcome uh, these things. Our hearts are being restored and we're able to feel, praise God, um, as we should. So now we are, our emotions are restored. Our emotions are now no, not, 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 not condemning us. So if, we, if somebody comes and points out a fault, that guilt that we feel is a healthy guilt. It should be there. Amen. And we shouldn't feel ashamed. I try to hide it, um, you know, uh, because that emotion is telling us something. Right? And it's the information that it provides for us to, to learn and to grow. Uh, we should not feel guilty 
um, um, about our anger. Um, we not, should not feel guilty about being jealous. We should not feel guilty, um, you know, about the, the resentment that comes, you know, when somebody disrespects you or says something offensive or when this child has done this or when this uh, uh, boss has said that, we should not feel uh, condemned by those emotions motion that we have but we should recognize them acknowledge them um and use them amen to find out where god is going to apply the healing where god is directing us praise god so to be human amen is to be emotional is to feel um to be human is to be sensitive to be human is to acknowledge uh, those feelings those feelings of guilt, those feelings of disrespect, somebody disrespects you, to acknowledge those feelings of disrespect, not, try to, not to try to hide them and to feel insecure in saying to even these people that I feel disrespected, you know, or I feel put down, or I feel because, again, they, they are not your source of power. Amen. You have something that is greater than your feelings. The Bible says if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts. Amen. To forgive us. So, so it should be nothing. We should not feel insecure. Amen. When, you know, our people who are close to us um, cause us to feel, um, experience negative emotion to just say it. Uh, to confront them about that behavior that causes them that because the flip side of that is that you suppress it. The flip side is that, that you pretend that everything is okay when things are not okay. The flip side of that is to play the hypocrite. And, and if you live this thing for a long enough period of time, it, it becomes who you are and you are living a lie. You don't want to go down that road. God has shed his blood that your heart becomes healed. And by so doing, your emotions are healed. You are able to love again. You're able to properly laugh again. You're able to not feel those senses of insecurity about things that are going wrong. Things are going wrong. Yeah, that's okay. You are still okay. Amen. You are no less a human being than before the things were going were not going right. Uh, you are failing in some areas. Um, it is okay. Amen. To fail in God. Outside of God, when you fail, there's literally no hope. But in God, it is okay to fail. I don't want you doing it in God because guess what? God is the answer to your failure. And in, 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 in failing in God, he provides the guidance that you need to ultimately overcome. But it is not, you, there should be no insecurity about admitting that failure, admitting that struggle, admitting that tendency, rather than to try to look like a Christian. You know, and try to pretend, put up that front when you go to church, um, or to try to put up that front in, in front of your friends. Um, you don't need to front things anymore. Amen. You just need uh, to trust in Jesus. You just need to follow him. Amen. So it doesn't mean, of course, that when you find yourself in those things that you are proud and showing it off. Amen. Because automatically, because you're in God, you are feeling the, 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 the consequence of those hurt and you're feeling the, 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 the debilitation that is caused, but you're not feeling uh, less than human. You're not feeling that you're less than a Christian or less than a believer because because um, you are going through these things, but you are also are feeling the power that is in God and you are open to the counsel of others. You're open to the prayers of others. You're open to the fastings of others. You're, hope, op you're open to the, um, to the, to the, you know, to the strengthening, strengthening with others as iron sharpens iron. That's why it is, it is critical to be in a church where there are other people who are also coming into themselves and not trying to put other people down because they look like they are not Christians and to try to guilt people. Amen. The church should be a church that is living in the love of God and the love of each other, not the guilt of each other, not the fear of each other, the love of each other and meeting that most critical human need, the need for love. Amen. So, so in wrapping up, um, to be human is to be in covenant 
love of God. Covenant underlined here meaning that you must be born again um, in order to find the humanity that God has for you. Uh, you must um, be baptized into Jesus, Jesus Christ. You must have the spirit of God in, in you. And it's an, it's an experiential event. It comes at a specific point in time, uh, which terminates, lives in another tongue. God said he will speak to his people. Amen. So we model the church of Acts. So you must be in covenant love of, with God in order to be restored into your humanity. Uh, you must, uh, um, to be human is to be growing in your relationship with God. There's no one that is not growing in relationship with God. And so in growing, it means that there are things that you're going to mistake, that you're going to be making, stumbling blocks that you're going to find, sin that you're gonna, that's going to come up. Amen. And all of these things are a part of helping you to grow conflict that you need to have with God. Sometimes you need to have conflict with God in order to grow because you have to, 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 to buck up on the obstacle and to be human means to be growing in relationship with yourself. Amen. To be growing in relationship with yourself. So if you're growing in a relationship with yourself, don't let anybody try to intimidate you to be, to front something else. You're not there yet. That's not who you are yet. You don't understand that yet. So don't try to fake it. Amen. You are growing in your relationship. So you will get to that part. But when people see that there's something that may be awry, uh, you're not defensive about it, but you are careful to listen um, and then take those things into reflection and continue to have those conversations with others and with God um, and until you get to that place. So we're in growing relationship with ourselves. Amen. We're in growing relationship with each other. Amen. That is what it means to be human, to be in relationship with God, to be in relationship with others. Amen. To be human is to experience the beauty of God. If you're not living your life, amen, uh, the way that God intended you to just live your life, to experience all that God has for you, what God has for you, you know, in Christ will be for you, um, you know, to experience um, the, 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 the joy of, of, you know, being in dominion of your of your circumstance to have your own, amen, to possess and to, you know, the things that God has set for you to possess, just to experience the beauty of God, uh, to experience the relationship with God and to experience the beauty of creation is what it means to be human. Some of us, because of our, uh, the nature of our relationship with God, sometimes we are making sacrifices in this life and, and a life with God is not without sacrifices because what ultimately what it is all about is eternal life. But it does not mean that we need not experience what God has given to us. The beauty of God's creation, the beauty of people in our lives, the beauty of, uh, you know, a, a job, you know, and being fulfilled in a task, you know, be achieving the, the beauty of achieving because nowhere reflects in the image of God and uh, of course in his excellence in, in, in holiness and his excellence in function. God is a powerful God and God has given us power to do as well. So it is human to experience all of God's creation and ultimately it is human uh, to live an abundant life, a life that of course is full of, of love Amen. The love of God, a life that is full of the love of others. And of course, everything that that involves uh, for our lives. Amen. So that is really just a, 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 a synopsis of all that we have tried to, some highlights or some important things to bring out, you know, in terms of what it means to be a human being um, within Christ, outside of Christ. Um, and we are saying that you will not be able to be restored in, in the person who you ought to be outside of our relationship with God. And of course, being in relationship with God, there are things that as Christians, we need to restore in our, you know, uh, in, in our humanity in order for us to really be the human beings that God has made us to be. If you are living uh, outside of a uh, outside of uh, your, you know pretending that you're you know you you are something when you are nothing you're not really living the humanity that god has made you to be if you're not living in compassion um, and love of others you're not the human that god has made you to be amen 
praise God. If you're not living um, you know, in trust in God, um, completely, completely surrendering your mind, completely surrendering your heart, completely giving your body to the Lord, uh, you are not in, you know, uh, uh, fulfilling the, the, the humanity. You're not living the human life and uh, being the human being that God has made you to be. And you see also that the many, the, the many, uh, uh, the, 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 the dysfunctions of our own humanity. We see the weaknesses in our lives. We see the weaknesses in ourselves. Amen. And we now have a different way of reflecting on those weaknesses. We don't need to pretend um, about those weaknesses anymore. We don't need to be ashamed um, um, of those weaknesses anymore. Uh, of course, shame comes with sin, but we don't. The, the, the overriding sentiment is not the shame and the guilt. The overriding sentiment is the grace of God, the forgiveness of God. You are forgiven. Whatever it is that you are holding yourself hostage with, you you are forgiven. You can be yourself. You don't have to pretend anymore and that as long as you're in Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. And that situation, as long as you're in Christ, it will be overcome. So why continue to be anxious over it? It is no longer you that is fighting. Anything that is not consistent with your human, uh, your humanity, your toxic people in your life, um, you need to separate from them and set boundaries in your life so that your humanity doesn't get distorted. You're starting to think you know, evil thoughts, you're starting to think depressive thoughts because of these things, your humanity is being affected and you need to confront those issues and deal with them rather than to give in because you also, your humanity says that you have received power other than the Holy Ghost has come and you don't need permission from nobody anymore to be yourself. You don't need permission, and I'll repeat that, from nobody to be who you are good, bad, or indifferent, as long as you're in Christ, amen. You don't need to, you don't need to give people excuses, um, amen. All you need to do, amen, is to give people who God has made you to be and your commitment to being your best self and to continue to growing in the Lord, amen. So we end our study here for tonight and God's willing, um, we will then pick up now with the aspect of our humanity that is that is outside of our natural capabilities. How does the spirit of God relate to our humanity? How do how are we complete in God? Amen. How are we? We cannot be restored into the image of God outside of uh, uh, the, the, uh, that relationship with the spirit of God. We want to see how that connects to, to the way that we think and the way that we feel in order to allow us to reflect and to manifest the power of God and the glory of God and the anointing of God in our lives. Amen. As we are restored. And let us take this time to pray right now. And we are praying again that we will be the person that God wants us to be, not how the world is distorting us and trying to push and to twist us. And our trials are causing us to be different from what God has already made us to be. We, are, we want to pray for all of us here, even as Christians and believers, as saints who are struggling to live um, and to really manifest the fullness of who God has made us to be. Uh, we really want to pray that we now lose all of those insecurities about ourselves and to really just be able to be free um, to be what God has made us to be and to be growing in who we are uh, growing into. Praise God. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, those individuals, mighty God, that you are blessing right now, allowing us, Lord God, to find ourselves, the selves that you have made us to be, allowing us to understand, Lord Jesus, that all is forgiven and this, the sin and the curse of sin over humanity is broken uh, because we have trusted in you. We are giving ourselves um, heart, mind, soul, and strength over to you, Lord Jesus, uh, Lord God, and we're praying for those who are, who are still struggling uh, to, you know, holding on to 
aspects of our uh, our humanity that we should have let go, trying still trying to control uh, our circumstances, Lord God, still trying to be who we are not really be supposed to be, Lord Jesus, who we not really are, uh, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, that we uh, may just let go and allow ourselves to be as you have made us to be, and in that process, Lord God, to be healed in our emotion, to be healed in our thinking, Lord God, and of course, to be restored fully in our relationship with you. We glorify your name, God. Hallelujah. And we say thanks in the name of Jesus. Praise God. God bless you tonight. Amen. Continue. Let us just continue to serve God. Let us just continue to live for him. Let us continue uh, to surrender all uh, to God in order that we might find and be what he has called us to be. Amen. God bless Amen. you, Lady Valerie. Good to, good to hear your voice. Good to see you. Yes, Mel. Tonight, Lady Mel, good to see you. Good to see you. God bless you. Amen. Yes, bless you too. <laughs> Lady Amen. Sean, Lady Celia, um, Lady Rocks, I see you. you know, I see you there iPhone at iPhone, maybe yes. Sir Finn, I don't know. Yes, um, but God bless you all. Amen. Yes, Praise God. God. Just continue. Amen, God. The blessing Amen. of God. Who's that? Who's that? that lady, lady Valerie, I hear somebody in the background there. It's uh, NJ. Ah, uh, NJ. All right. All right. Cool. God bless you all. Open your mics and greet somebody before you leave tonight in Thank Jesus' name. Thank you. Blessing. Amen. Blessings, everyone. Good night. Amen. Amen. Good night. Good night. Good night. No night. All right, NJ. There you go. All right. All right. God, God, God bless you all. Bless you too. All right. Bye. Bye.